Engaging and keeping good people is a persistent issue, meaning that it's not something that has a beginning, middle, and end to it. Let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk because, amongst other things, today's guest believes caring about people and noticing them, that's your real work. A pocket-sized pep talk, the podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jollis. Today's guest, Dr. Beverly Kay, is recognized internationally as one of the most knowledgeable and practical professionals in the area of career development, employee engagement, and retention. Her Wall Street Journal bestseller, Love Them or Lose Them, Getting Good People to Stay, is now in its sixth edition, and her newest books, Up is Not the Only Way, and Help Them Grow or Watch Them Go, continues to help many and overwhelm manager with ways to blend career conversations into their everyday routine. She's received lifetime achievement awards from ATD, IMS, the Best Practice Institute, and well, the list is far more extensive. We just have to get to our podcast. Glad to have you with us and welcome to the show, my friend Bev. Thank you. I am glad to be here. But, well, I beat the I say that to all the boys, by the way. <laughs> I, I was thinking that. I'll bet she said that I before. I say that to all the boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you here. So let's dive in. And with you, I want to start. I want to start with Love Them or Lose Them because six editions is an extraordinary accomplishment. And last time I looked, there were a lot of books out there. But what made this book click? You know, I've often asked myself that. And I think it's because it's, and it was meant to be, a simple way for a crazed, busy manager to flip to a page and say, I could do that. And that's, I think, my sign of giving a good talk. If the people in the audience say, that's not so hard, I could do that. That's what I want. It really is about simplicity and specific ideas. It, it, you know, I think people say, managers, you've got to have empathy. Well, a typical busy tech manager, empathy, well, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, we use words we think people know how to put into action, and they don't. So we have to give them the words to use. Yeah. And, you know, you hit on something that's really interesting because people don't understand this about professional speakers and authors like Bev and myself, is that when we haven't given a presentation, we tend to go along. And the more we give it and the better we write, we get it. The tough part is getting it into simple, easy to digest. Right. And, and you're right. The ultimate compliment, compliment is when somebody comes up and says, you know, I've always wanted to do that because that tells you you're making it look easy. Right. But believe me, right. easy can be hard. That's the challenging right. part. Right. That's what we do. You know, I founded my company on four words that start with a D that I wanted all of the products to be deceptively simple, meaning, well, that's easy. But under it is all this research, delightfully engaging. I love the smile factor. It's got to be there in every article and delightfully engaging, um, deliberately flexible. Nowadays, when you try to help a company, if you don't hear this has to be only 30 minutes or only five minutes, shame on you. And then the last D is uh, decidedly business centric. Like, what is that business trying to do? But again, deceptively simple, number one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the key. And, and you know, there are certain things like, like I, when I work with a sales team, I, you know, I'll tell them, listen, you've got to ask question and questions and listen. And they, they, they start yawning. Of course, I typically will take them beforehand of them selling things where nobody's asking questions. Right, right. And somebody right. brought me in a book one time from 1923. It was a sales book for one of the insurance companies. And on page one, <laughs> ask questions and listen. These things are simple. And yet some of the most basic pieces are what really 
that's right. where we fumble. That's what that's what we can't get our hands on. So, and that's that unconscious incompetency thing that right. we were talking about before we went on the air. Right. We, and, sometimes and we forget. Is, it's good parenting advice. Yeah. Ask questions and listen. Yeah. Yeah. You know that all of this comes from stuff we know in our hearts. That's why I love the book um, about the knowing doing gap. Because there, I remember giving my first speech on Love Him, and a big shot stood up in front of his whole team, and he said, everything Beverly's going to tell you, you already know. And I'm off stage. I'm thinking, I'm going to shoot myself right now. I, I, how can I speak when every... And, and then he said, because your mother taught it to you <laughs> when she said, go out and play nice in the sandbox. And that's true. It's like... You know this. Are yeah. you doing it? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I've always kind of played with the with the phrase instinct versus logic, because a lot of times what we're doing is what what we're you're teaching is mm -hmm. it's not like it's illogical. It's it's sort of that we've we've learned this, but our instinct is frequently off. Right. It's not logic. It's the instinct that's screwing us. For instance, no one argues with yes. The more someone else talks generally, the more they like us. I got to ask questions. Listen, all right, that's logical. Now, is it instinctive? So right. some of the things, and we'll dig into that. Let, 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 let me let me, let me jump in with, with a question I was thinking about, because when I came out of school, I was hunting for a company and, and I was motivated to work hard. So, the, to, so what I was looking for was, well, I want to be with a company that will reward that kind of effort, that if I work hard, uh, there'll be a path for me. Can you talk a little bit about these companies with these internal mobility programs uh, in their organizations? Uh, just the value of that, because because you know I still remember that was number one on my radar screen. Number one, it, when you said internal mobility, meaning I want to climb the ladder. Yeah, that yeah. was. I, I want well, I want a ladder to climb. Ladder I, to I want climb, there right. to be opportunities not you don't have to just give them to me because i'm smiling but what if i really love this company and want to stay with the company and and see this company as my family is there a way for me to to work move mobily within the company right and you know what breaks my heart is in 1982 based on my doctoral research i uh prentice all said we want to write publish it and I wrote a book titled Up is Not the Only Way. And I had failed my doctoral orals three times to, to get to the theory of up is not the only way. And for 40 years, I've been singing it from mountaintops. And now, finally, internal talent mobility is hot, hot, hot in every organization. And what that means is up vertical is only one of six different moves. And I think of those six, the one we forget the most is grow in grow right where you are, which relates back to the idea of opportunity. I think people are either opportunity minded. Here's how I can build that or opportunity blinded. Oh, woe is me, I'll never get there. And all of that, you know in your heart of hearts, but as a leader, you don't stop and do, or take an interest in, or follow up on. Wow. You know, I'm, I, I got, you've got me thinking because I remember that, uh, and I've worked with managers, managers, I've done some management training with Zenger Mill and a couple other companies, and one of my favorite pieces was sort of this battle between recognition and uh, with managers frequently being concerned, thinking all they want is more money. All they want is more money. And I love the fact that I was when I was working with managers equipped with, I'll give you 25 things you can do that have nothing to do with money. Uh, but people do want to be recognized. They do want to feel good about their space. And I just wish we could get the two sides together and realize don't, don't, you know, sometimes the managers aren't giving recognition properly. You know, you did great. Way to go. That's not really recognition. No wonder right. somebody is asking for more. You told me I did great. 
be right. more specific, et cetera. Right. But here's I, I, what yeah. you did specifically. Yeah. And exactly. here's what lit me up. And here's yeah. what, you know, in Love Em, um, in one of the chapters, the book is written according to the alphabet. The R is for recognition, rewards. And, and it is saying that if you stop and notice, I noticed your eyes got brighter when you talked about X. Tell me more about what about X got you excited. Yeah. That's a manager who notices. Yeah. And it takes a nanosecond or three to notice. Right. Um, so I think that's so important. And, you know, you use the word notice earlier. Yeah. And it, it jumped to my mind that I say that noticing is recognizing. Here's what I see verbalize seeing verbalizing here's what i just saw you do and then if you can mobilize it how about if i meet moved you to that desk so you could do that piece whoa i mean that's what people are craving yeah and and it's not as if i'm going to come in tomorrow less inspired <laughs> You know, no, right. we, we got to remind the managers, of course, this is not the time to say, and Bev, if only you could add this or do that, right, which right, is right. what, again, you know, kind of the next piece of poison of why rec why managers are scratching their heads said, I've tried to give people recognition. It doesn't work. There are no buts. There are no ifs. There's no ands. But what I love that you just did was, but there's a very fertile ground to see what else we can do right. and, and flush out because now I have an employee that's beginning to trust me and wants to talk right. to me. Right. And, and sees that he noticed me. Yeah. He noticed that my heart went beep, beep, beep when I did that report. Yeah. I mean, that's the greatest gift we can give, maybe. Yeah. Is I notice this about you. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah, I love it. Okay. All right. Well, we're on we're on to some employee growth now. So tell me some practical things that companies can do to support and, and inspire employee growth we know one we bumped into just now which is we might we might want to recognize them and look them in the eye while we're doing it right. some other thoughts so I'll, I'll give it to you in a way that helps your audience remember i've always talked about career leverage the more leverage you have in your career the more opportunities you'll see and if you're a manager sitting down with an employee and you have to talk about career and you think they're going to want up and there's no up. It's, it's all about career leverage. And for any manager out there nervous about having a career conversation, just write L-E-V-E-R-R -E -R on your thumb or on your desk. And remember, it's about lateral moves, what's possible. It's about enrichment. How do I grow you where you are? It is about vertical, but the upside and the downside of vertical, you've got to talk about. It's about the first E, is, the second E is exploratory. What might you try out? The first R is about realignment. What if you moved into a position that you hate? Can you tell me you hate it? You're not doing well at it, so I can move you somewhere else. That's realignment. And then relocation is, if it's not working, I know I can't keep you forever. But boy, oh boy, when you leave, I want you to have an invitation to come back again. I think the boomerang business is hot. Wow. So are you letting them go knowing the door is open? Hmm. That's interesting. I, I remember when I, I, I only worked for a couple of companies. It's been working for me for over 30 years now. But I do remember when I was leaving uh, Computer Sciences Corporation. I remember. Thank that. goodness I had a, a tech writer who was a friend because I wasn't really upset or anything. I had let a few people go, but I wrote a very long letter <laughs> referred to as my manifesto. And uh, I had a tech writer who said, here, let me take a look at that and chopped it down to about three sentences. 
And that was my responsibility on the boomerang effect, because when I handed them that note and there really were no hard feelings, I was just a young man trying to make a point. Uh, And that wasn't the time to make my point, certainly not the way that uh, that company and I did do business later on, uh, me as a consultant, uh, because uh, I handled my exit properly. So, yeah, that means something. But again, instinct versus logic. My instinct was, oh, this is the time where where I get things off my chest. Right. And right. Uh, that's not logical, but it is instinctive. Right. Right. When we're right. young. No, All right. We, we're talking about uh, bosses and 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 some some not so great bosses. And I, I'm curious. And maybe I you I think you've written that the number one reason why people will quit or leave is because of bad bosses. So if I've got that right, tell me give me some thoughts of what a bad boss can improve upon. And I think we got one, unless you tell me no, which is let's, tr- let's not just say give recognition. Let's give them a repeatable, predictable process that makes sense. So let's right. pretend that we've got that one on the radar screen. Are there others? Oh my gosh. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, I told you that love them is written according to the alphabet mm-hmm. A through Z. The J chapter stands for jerk are you one (laughs) and when we came on the first publication 1999 and we said the j is going to stand for jerk the publisher said no why would you do that everything is positive you can't write about jerk and we said we have to because the data said we have to and here's how we learned about jerk we took um exit interviews and we followed the person to the new org. Right. And we said, we have your exit interview in hand. What didn't you write? What wasn't on here? And to a person, they said in a variety of words, my boss was a jerk and I could not stand it anymore. And as good researchers, we said, well, can you tell us what you mean by jerk? And they gave us 55 jerkatoodle characteristics. <laughs> Is that a word? Did you down. just make that up? I jerk-a-toodle. Made it up yes. Jerkatoodle. Jerkatoodle. I made it up. Okay. And um, and every single one of those words are what people said was the real reason they left. So when I do workshops and presentations, I'll give the jerk checklist. And I'll say how big, you know, I used to say, how big a jerk are you? Which five do you do? Now, not right. Now I say, have any of you to a room of managers had a jerk for a boss? And what did it do to you? What did it do to your creativity? What did it do to your productivity? And everybody's hand goes up. Yeah. And when they start saying, here's what it did to me is when they get you're right i'm a jerk some of the time and and the the managers that are willing will actually give the jerk checklist to their employees and say i don't want to be a jerk you're precious to me which of these things do i need to curb or stop now wouldn't that be a great exercise if everybody would do it? Yeah, sure would be. You know, Xerox had a mechanism in place to try and spot the jerks um, by, and, and you know, this is to me, uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, before I had left to try and spot them, uh, we would have an outside company come in and pull the employees. Uh, and if, if the numbers didn't hit a certain range, the, the managers were given a certain period of time to either correct it or they were moved on right, or out. Right, uh, right, right. But I will tell you, it blew up in my face because we had a we. Had, and I, I'm 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 so lucky. I had you know worked for three great companies before my own, and I and I had a bunch of bosses and only had one jerk. But this guy was such a jerk that there were 24 people he was managing, and he they were most of the questions he nobody gave him a mark on. Which meant we were all outed. Right, this, right, this. Right. We needed we needed to get together and go. Listen, somebody's got to you know take a bullet out of the chamber, or right. we're in trouble. 
And it really blew up on us because we had a jerk, you know, when you go out for 24, there's a reason for it. Uh, so now we have a, a jerk boss that was uh, very hostile and it, and it actually made me leave the company. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I say to HR leaders, do you coach or can your jerks or do you ignore their behavior because they're bringing in great contracts, doing great work. And boy, I'll tell you, everybody sits up and says, my gosh, you're right. I didn't coach him and I didn't can him. He's still here. She's still here. Yeah. And so again, simple questions. Yeah. I'm so glad you're in this space. I, you know, I, I stole a line from, from, Woody Allen, he had a joke one time where he said a, hur a horrible hurricane hit new the New Jersey shoreline. They wiped out everything. The only thing left was the, the three steel milk bottles at the carnival that you're supposed to knock over. Right. That's the only <laughs> thing that survived the hurricane. Uh, these jerk bosses are like steel bottles sometimes. You're right. The, the entire company can implode. Somehow, that cubicle is right. still there because that's part of the jerk mantra. I guess they do know how to somehow manipulate and protect themselves. So it it's really meaningful to hear you talking about that because that's the only reason why I left. Right. I was thinking those those steel bottles are never going to go down. Right. And it's right. time for me to go. I it's it's I'm bringing this right. home with me. And yeah, I'm a right. pretty happy guy and and uh, I'm happy since, but I looked back and I went that's what did it was the individual, it wasn't right. the company. Right. Right. Usually. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So so let's talk about hiring for a moment, uh, because we all want to hire the, the the right person, but and 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 you know hire intelligently. I'm assuming that this is going to have a lot to do with engagement and retention. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. And again, the H in the alphabet is hire. So we aren't specialists in what's now called talent acquisition, but um, you know it, it's like. Fit is it. And when you hire, um, are you hiring for fit? Do you even know what fit is in your group and, and in your organization? And do you, when you hire, re-recruit your new hire? Like we got somebody in, the position's filled, done, on to other business. Do you say, hey, how's it going? Do you ask the question, what are you getting here that you didn't want? Or what are you not getting that you wanted? What did the recruiter tell you that isn't so? And that, my friend, is the biggest reason people leave. They say the picture the recruiter painted wow. wasn't real. And so it's not up to the recruiter to find that person that came in. It's up to the manager to say, is this what you thought it would be? Yeah. See, all those are simple questions. Right, right. And if we sit and wait and, and milk the answer a little bit, it, it's where my whole idea of stay interviews came because um, from all the people we followed into that next company, you know, we learned that um, no, no one asked them what would make them leave right. before they left. Right. And no one now says, what can I do to have you stay? Right. Right. Or, or, or even, you know, before it even gets there, what can I do to make this even more rewarding for you while yeah. you're here? It's you know, a great something. question. Yeah. Okay. Um, and ask it. It takes a minute to ask or half a minute, half. And right. they'll, and if they'll think about it, if they can't answer, they'll go home, they'll sleep on it. Yeah. Yeah. You and know, they'll come yeah. back and say, you know, that was a great question. Here's my answer. Right. right. And for people who are listening, I can give you a great place to tuck that in in case you're wondering where do we insert that little ditty? Right at the end of your recognition, that's where you can insert that little piece that's because right. you've got somebody who's now feeling very good about themselves and very trusting. And remember, we're not finishing it with now, if you could only, we're finishing with 
what else could, what else could I do to, right. to make this right. more rewarding? So we now have a process behavior we can tack in so we can make that repeatable and predictable and not wait till we're in a good mood or we think about it. Right. Do it every That's time right. to give recognition. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> anyway. All right. Listen, you, um, you have owned this space for a while now. Long, you got a long career in mobility, retention, engagement, in, in leaders as an engagement leader. What's next? What, what what's next on the horizon for you? You know, the latest thing I've been looking at are the gigantic amount of layoffs and layoff, 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 layoff. And it made me uh, go back in my files to the last time we had big layoffs, late, late 90s or whatever. And at that time, I just pulled it out. I talked about, we're not attending to those who are still there. We're, we're looking at the people who are leaving and what more can we do, et cetera. The fact that there are big layoffs in your company means the people left are looking around. Do you know who they are? Do you know where they're looking? Have you sent them a message that you want them to stay? So it is, I'm talking about the kept on workforce. Who stays after groups leave? And it, it's all the retention stuff again but with a new maybe holder for all of it. So I'm looking at that and I'm looking at how to get my work out um, in, in edible bites. Like I miss when I used to do three-day workshops <laughs> and then two-day workshops and then one-day workshop and then no-day workshops. <laughs> And how do I get how do I get with the sound bite generation? Right, I might be a TikTok for you. Uh, although I will tell you, and we were talking about this, I've noticed that um, that workshops, as the pandemic is easing a bit, are yeah. coming back. But of course, they're not as long. You, I'm smiling because I bet people went three day workshops. Folks, you know, Xerox used to have a pretty good reputation in training. Our workshops were two weeks long right. and and that then you went out in the field and studied your product because I don't need to be hanging around while you're learning about a copier and a printer. And then we'll come back for two more weeks. Right. So it was right. four weeks, That's six great. students, one instructor. Uh, we then we went to a week, then we went to three days, two days. But I tell you one that you know, one of the things this pandemic has taught us, I think, Bev, that if we could just sort of talk about training for 60 seconds. I'm noticing more and more companies and they're the ones teaching me. They want that workshop and yes, they want it trimmed down, but they may say, I'll tell you what, I want a one day workshop from you. And then I want 25 one hour sessions once a week. And I, right. I, I equate it to, so you come here live and plant the garden. And then right. I want to see you weekly or bi-weekly to help us grow the garden. That's because, exactly what I've been doing lately. Yeah. And you right. know, when we do that, we're doing our job because believe me, Bev and I are obsessed and focused, maybe not when we started, but if you're in the business a while, we get our report card, not from an amazing delivery in a sense. And I don't mean this arrogantly. That's not that hard for us. We get it when you implement what we teach you. And when we come back and you've done it and you're seeing results, that's when we get excited. That's when we want to write another book. That's when right. we want to go. Um, and so I like this um, little dance that's going on between live and virtual. And I was yeah. never big on a YouTube. I don't want to meet you and get your mind share virtually, but I'll plant it and then grow it virtually. Right, right. And I'll send reminders. I'll nudge you on what I just taught you. Yeah. You know, and that's working. Yeah. So. Excellent. Uh, you know, one last thing, uh, you know, we in sales, we use the term a uh, whiff them. Have you ever heard that before? Whiff them. Yep. Yeah, yep. he's not. What's in it for me, right? right so when we're right. listening and you're listening to Pev talk, and oh, by the way, where do we get those books of yours? They're on Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. On. You got yourself an author's page, right? Good. So everybody, you know where to get it, but you're not just going to get these books. 
You're going to read these books, and then you're going to write a review on these books. And we now return to Rob's question. We have uh, whiffums. And if and when I say a whiffum, if you're listening and you want to know what's in it for you to, to act on some of the things that Bev is talking about and to grab one of those books and to really sit down and you can listen to her communicate, you know it's going to be simple and, and bite-sized. The whiffum is it costs a lot of money to have to keep hiring people. <laughs> it's right. So would you like to, to trim that budget a little bit on it? Let's get it. Let's do it right the first time and then understand that everybody has a limp. Everybody right. has an, a, right. an issue here or there. Right. Uh, when we know how to manage it and coach it and, and, and motivate, inspire and work through it and, and create trust, we can save that individual and we can save dollars from you going through that hiring. Right. And Sorry. every manager knows that in their heart of hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet in the rush to get the work done, yeah, it, you lose it. Right. Instinct versus logic, right? Sure is logical, but is it instinctive? Right. I'd fight so much harder to hold that employee than go through the the search and the training. And uh, it's there's a lot going on there, and that costs money. Yeah. Okay. One last question for you. Mentors. I'm I'm curious. What kind what what mentors have, have helped you kind of find your way and find this space? You know, um, there's also a chapter, M chapters for mentor, where I define <laughs> it in the Love em book. But people who have been mentors to me have seen me in a light that I never saw myself and said something to me that stuck. And, you know, sometimes it slips off. Like I was telling someone the other day who was saying, God, you've done, you know, you've done so much in the field. And and I I say to myself, please, God, help me become the person my dog thinks I am. Love that phrase. Because yeah. you never feel, you know, what your contribution really is. It's always, for me at least, it's, do more, do more, do more. They're doing more. He's doing more. And it's stopping for a moment and taking in, good on you. You did a good job. I don't do it enough. Right. And yet we coach others to do it. Well, yeah. I'll do it for you. Um, you know, getting to know you has been very special to me. Um, and, um, although Bev and I sort of saw each other a few times, we, we really connected over the, over the summer, late summer. And, um, I respect the work you do. I think your books are tremendous. I think you I, I, I think you really get it, which is, um, I, I, I wish more authors would understand that the hard part is getting it simple. The hard part is getting it so people can hold on to it and understand it because they said, what we want is we want you to be delighted, but we want you to actually do it, do, you know, follow it, learn it, apply it. And that takes a very unusual talent and skill. Um, you have a tremendous amount of content and information out there, extremely well-respected in your field. I respect you a great deal with and that's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll stop. Don't worry, but um, you need to hear that. And uh, how, how do people get a hold of you, my friend? Uh, I've got a website. Um, I shrunk my company. Uh, so I'm little now and, and, and able to move easily. So it's uh, bevk.com. There you go. And can um, they reach out to you on LinkedIn as well? Would you, would you I, take I'm, a minute if they came to yeah, you? They can. They can okay. reach out to me on LinkedIn, visit my website, email right. me bev at bevk.com. Yeah. And don't forget to go to Amazon and, and grab uh, one of those book, one of those many books that she has. Uh, well, as I said, um, I, this was long overdue. I am thrilled that we finally sat down and did this. And I'm grateful you were able to spend some time with me today. Thank, Thank you, Bev. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll do it again as well as we can next time, everyone. Until then, stay safe. Thanks so much for listening. 
If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com. <laughs>